young adults that are coming out of high school ve- relatively soon, that are graduating from college relatively soon, and they come on, they watch the replay, and they're like, I thought about law enforcement, but it, it guys seem like you're in trouble like every other year for something. So I don't know. I, I wanted to, but I don't. I'm, I'm kind of in and I'm out. I got my foot halfway through the door. To anyone who's looking to get into the field of law enforcement, first, would you advise them to get into law enforcement? And secondly, uh, would you? Uh, what would you tell them the, the next steps would be? Well, I, I'll tell you this is, is law enforcement was the greatest job that I ever had when I was happy there. Like when I had the best leadership, it was the greatest job in the world and I wouldn't trade it for the world. The experiences right. that I had there shaped my life in ways that I can't even tell you. I made connections with people in the community that I still talk to. Mm-hmm. People, the kids that I used to run after and jump over fences before weight set in. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm in touch with that I've graduated college and, and been in the military. And there's nothing like that in this world. Like unless you're a coach or, or, or a mentor of some sort. I'll tell you this is, is it's a different game now. Like it's a completely different game, law enforcement. If you truly want to get into this, this profession, and I say it's a profession, uh, but I use that very, very lightly because it's slowly turning into a job. Mm. Uh, it's slowly turning into a job rather than a profession and a career, which is scary. But if you truly want to get into this, I encourage you to do, to do a couple of things. One, I encourage you to go do a ride along. Mm. Um, because before you do this job, what you see on live PD and what you see on TV is completely different than what reality is. And you go around along, you're going to see that a majority of your shift is mundane stuff. Mm. You can speak to this too. You know, it's not running and gunning, uh, you know, 11 and a half hours out of your 12 hour shift. It ain't that. Trust me. It's not. Um, you know, there's a lot of mundane things. There's a lot of things that you need to give up to do this profession. Yeah. Your personal and professional, your personal life muddies into your professional life, and you have to be prepared to 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 take a step backwards. You have yeah. to be prepared off duty to have the same conduct that you would on duty, which is professional. Yeah. I'll tell you this also: if you're really thinking about being in law enforcement, you need to make sure you surround yourself with as much culture as you possibly can. Mm. And what I mean by that is, is that if you have lived a sheltered life, your whole entire life, or you've Mm. lived uh, in a, in a cultured area, one particular area, your whole entire life, you would do yourself major justice by starting to volunteer in different P different demographics of the community to get an idea and to learn some empathy. Right. And, and to really see the struggle that people face out in the community. Mm-hmm. What we see is, is we see folks that have been sheltered their whole entire life. They go to college and they get out and their first interaction with people that's the opposite of them mm-hmm. is when they're a cop. Yeah. And they get into an altercation with that person that they're not normally used to encountering. And fear sets in. Yeah. And, and human behavior is, is that with fear is to defend yourself or what yeah. you think you're defending yourself. And we have a lot. We're like Batman. We got a lot of stuff on us. <laughs> so you start reaching for things that you shouldn't be reaching for. Mm. And I feel like my upbringing, where I came from in New York City, blessed me with the fact that I'm able to use this more than any other weapon that mm. I had on me. I can go up to eight gangbangers and talk to them for seven hours straight and not get fisticuffs with them. Mm -hmm. I can talk a a career criminal into handcuffs just with the way that I have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, that, that you have to cultivate over time. Right. You can't force it. Right. But if you're not doing that stuff before you think about coming into this profession, you're not going to be successful at Mm -hmm. all good leadership bad leadership so many things compound and weigh heavy on the mind can you explain some of the effects or some of the what what causes some mental health issues to get you to the point where you want to cause self-harm sure so i mean it, there's there's so many red flags that we can see um mm-hmm. i'll tell you some that 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 are the big red flags so the officers that are constantly working overtime repeatedly mm-hmm could be a a strong indicator of some financial issues in the background Mm -hmm. uh, that could 
conversations with your coworkers about relationship issues. Um, those are conversations that could be red flags. Mm. Uh, folks that are having relationship issues compounded with financial issues mm. can result in mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, when you're out in the field and you're seeing uh, your coworkers in law enforcement have a very short fuse when dealing with the public, that's a pretty good indicator too. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you this, and, and, and this resonates with me. We, we had a conversation about it. There are folks that are very, very good about masking it. And I was one of those folks. Uh, I was always happy to come to work. What you see right now, the conversations that I have mm -hmm. are the same way I was when, when, when I was a cop. So I put on a very good persona, very, very good front. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody knew the struggles that I was going through because I took it. I was, I was very jovial around people. Um, and, and nobody, I could tell you, nobody would have known what I was going to do because mm -hmm. I was not careful about it. My own family didn't know. Yeah. I remember you explaining it in the book. Yeah. yeah. And in the book, nobody knew, like nobody knew, but I'll tell you this is, is that when we talk about leadership, the stuff that you do to your folks, and this just doesn't go for law enforcement. Let's say you're in the private sector. The things that you do to your your coworkers or your subordinates uh, can resonate and start a, a domino effect of mental health issues. Uh, and repeated amounts of mental abuse can do that. Uh, and so folks need to realize that um, when you're talking to folks, um, you know, I always go with this with this when I was a when I was a supervisor. Talk uh -huh. to the public and talk to people like you would talk to your mother.